What's up with you two? Thanks for coming to my channel. My name is One of a Kind Blogs. If you're new to this channel, like, subscribe, turn on post notifications so you never miss a video, and comment down below. Today we're going to talk about William Grant Steele. William Grant Steele. Hmm. Often referred to as the Dean of Afro-American Composers, Steele was the first American composer to have an opera produced by the New York City Opera. Still is known primarily for his first symphony, Afro-American Symphony, 1930, which was, uh, which was until 1950, the most widely performed symphony composed by an American. Also of note, Still was the first African-American to conduct a major American Sympathy Orchestra. The first to have a sympathy, which was, in fact, the first one he composed, performed by a leading orchestra, the first to have an opera performed by a major opera company, and the first to have an opera performed of national television. William Grant Steele Jr was born on May 11th, 19, I mean 1895, in Woodville, Mississippi. He was the son of two teachers, not one, but two teachers. That's a, that's a leap. Carrie Lena Fambro Shepherdson, 1872 to 1927, and William Grant Steele Sr. 1871 to 1895. His father was a partner in a grocery store and performed as a local band leader. William Grant Steel Sr. died when his infant son was three months old. Steele's mother, Steele's mother moved with him to Little Rock, Arkansas, where he taught high school English. She taught. High school she met and in 1904 married Charles B. Shepherdson, who nurtured his stepson William's musical interest by taking him to operas and buying red seal recording recordings of clerical or classical music, which the boy greatly enjoyed. The two attended a number of performances by music musicians on tour. His maternal grand maternal grandmother Ann Fambro, F A M B R O, Fambro, sang African American spirituals to him. Well, we in the water. <laughs> still, still. Started violin violin lessons in Little Rock at the age of 15. He taught himself to play the clarinet, saxophone, double bass, cello, and violin, and showed a great interest in music. That brother right there knew how to play. He had another prince, ain't he? At the age of 16, he graduated as class valedictorian from M.W. Gibbs High School in Little Rock in 1911. His mother wanted him to go to medical school, as, as everyone probably did back in the day. So still pursued a Bachelor of Science degree program at Wilberforce University, a historically black college in Ohio. Still became a member of Kappa Alpha Phi fraternity. He conducted the university band, led to play various instruments, and started to compose and to do orchestration. He left Wilberforce without graduating. Man, that was odd. Upon receiving, upon receiving a small amount of money left to him by his father, he began studying at the Oberlin Conservatory of Music. Still worked for the school, assisting 
the janitor, along with a few other small jobs outside of the school, yet still struggled financially. When Professor Levin, L-E-B-M-A-N-N, -N, that's right, asked Steele why he wasn't studying comp composition, Steele told him honestly that he couldn't afford to, leading to George Andrews agreeing to teach him composition. Oh, composition, I'm sorry, composition without charge. He also studied privately with the modern French composer Ed, Edgard, Edgard and the American composer George Whitefield Chadwick. And his name's a killer. On October the 4th, 1915, Steele married Grace Budley, whom he had met while they were both in Wilberforce. They had a son, William III, and three daughters, Gail, June, and Caroline. That brother was busy. They separated in 1932 and divorced February 6, 1939. On February 8, 1939, he married pianist Werner Avery, driving to Tijuana for the ceremony because interracial marriage was illegal in California. They had a daughter, Judith Ann, and a son, Duncan. That brother making some children, you hear me? Good day. Still, great daughter is journalist Kelsey Headley, a daughter of June Judith Ann. Man, that dude right there is something strange. On December the first, nineteen seventy-six, his home was designated Los Angeles Historical Cultural Movement Monument. Number 169, it was located at 1262 Victoria Avenue in Oxford Square, Los Angeles. Now, let me back it up a little bit. This brother had already had a son, William III, and three daughters. That's one son and three daughters. Then he turns around, that tells his brother, his brother was busy. Then he turned around and had, got remarried and had uh, a daughter and another son. So that's two sons. Oh, man, good day no more. They, they want to put that sucker up. <laughs> well, everybody, I hope you learned something about this man right here, William Grant Steele, he was a busy young man. He, you know, he went through a lot of accolades and just, you know, just going through life like everybody else, you know. Um, so let me say this. If you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, click on post notifications so that you never miss a video and comment down below. Remember that you're too blessed, too blessed to be stressed. Love and happiness at all times. Hug somebody, tell me love, and I always do a random act of kindness. Now again, I'm not gonna keep preaching y'all about a random act of kindness. I believe my next video is gonna be on a random act of kindness part three. Because y'all not getting what I'm saying. But yet, I'm gonna do a challenge. Another random act of kindness challenge. And that's coming soon. I'll give you instructions on what I'm looking for and what I'm looking for. So until then, I'll see y'all on the next one.